All right, Red Frankenstein. Now I'm gonna talk about the movie. So there's a whole playlist for let's read Frankenstein um, to the three people that watched it, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Probably should have edited that down. It was too long and boring. But uh, anyways, it's there, but we're gonna talk about the movie today, the movie adaptation of the novel. This is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein from 1994. Uh, it stars Kenneth Branagh as Victor Frankenstein. He also directed the film. You've got Robert De Niro here as the monster. <clears throat> oh, let's see, who else is in this? Tom Holtz as Victor's friend, uh, Henry Clarable. You'd probably know him from Amadeus, Amadeus, Amadeus. We've got uh, Helena Bonham Carter. Okay, she plays Elizabeth, uh, Victor's adopted sister, who he then marries. No longer brother and sister, now husband and wife. Ooh. We've got Aidan Quinn. He plays the captain of the vessel at the beginning of the film that's trapped in the ice. And we, my dog's barking. We're doing it live. I'm sorry, I apologize. We have Ian Holm is Victor's father, Alphonse, John Cleese. Um, I gotta take my dog out. Let me put this on pause. Come here, you're making all that noise because you want to be heard and seen, so let everybody see you. There you are. There you are. Say hi to the camera, Chloe. Hmm? All right, everybody, that's my dog who's barking her head off. I'll put her back in the house. All right, now where was I? I don't even know what I was talking about. Movie, Frankenstein. All right. Oh, so Victor Frankenstein creates a monster. Um, know the story, read the book, whatever. But, uh, you know, we're not really going to talk about the 1931 version because that's its own thing completely. <laughs> I'm doing it live. I'm not recording this again. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it deviates. The movie deviates a lot. I'm not going to go into all the, the deviations, but I think really the big one is Henry Clerval, Victor's friend in the film. Um, he dies in the book. Not sure that he dies in the movie. When Victor creates the monster in the book, it's completely on his own, all of his own research. In the film, he steals his professor's notes after his professor gets murdered. So it's all kind of like he takes his professor's studies and then uses that to create the monster. There's It's kind of elaborate in the film, kind of like a steampunk setup with electric eels and weird steam-driven devices and lightning and... Excuse me, I don't know what else, how he reanimates... Man! Indigestion. I'm having time recording this. Ugh, excuse me. But uh, don't worry, I'll edit that out later. But um, <laughs> yeah, he uh, he brings the creature to life through means that are kind of, you know, not explained in the book. I think it's kind of an homage to the 1931 version with Boris Karloff. But um yeah, and then I'm not really a fan of the way that whole scene goes down in the movie, where Victor's just kind of like, what have I done? It's not as dramatic. The movie then kind of uh, moves at a breakneck pace as compared to the novel, whereas uh, once this creature goes on his killing spree, he kills uh, Victor's younger brother, William, and then he plants the locket on Justine. Now, Justine, in the book, there's this whole elaborate like scene where she's in prison and Elizabeth goes to talk to her and Victor talks to her. She talks about confessing to the priest that she did the crime, even though she didn't because she's being denied absolution and there's a trial and then, you know, she's executed in the movie. A lynch mob just grabs her immediately and kills her, you know, with no trial whatsoever. And then the time is compressed from the book, there's a long period of time where Victor meets the creature. The creature tells him his backstory, and Victor agrees, okay, I will create a companion for you. 
there's just like months and months and months and months go by in the novel. And in the film, it's like on the same day. Okay, like Victor, like immediately after Justine is killed, Victor marries Elizabeth. And then the creatures comes in and like Mortal Kombat style, Mortal Kombat, <laughs> punches out Elizabeth's heart, pulls it up, bum, 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 like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Dune style, um, you know, heart in his hand fatality. Frankenstein's monster wins. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. So then Victor, which is not in the novel, like takes Justine's corpse and like takes Elizabeth, his wife, and cuts off the, her head and sticks it on Justine's body and then does the whole electric eel contraption thing to reanimate her and bring her back to life. And I think it's kind of like an homage to Bride of Frankenstein. But in the novel, he never reanimated the female companion. And yeah, and, and then the way that um, that whole scene goes down, it's a great scene. I think that the that uh, Helena Bonham Carter does a fantastic job. I think it's horrifying, but it's not in the novel. Um, she takes like, she goes nuts. They're like fighting tug of war style over her. And then she just goes, no, 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 you know, it kind, kind of just with her eye acting and just, you know, cause there's no, she doesn't like actually say anything, but she takes like a, she runs out, takes a kerosene lamp and full Denethor style in uh, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, just like, combust herself you know catches on fire and just runs you know so i don't know what's going on with that maybe peter jackson saw that scene and thought hey what if denethor does that in return of the king because i mean it was very similar to me the whole uh that whole sequence going down it was really over the top but you know i don't hate the movie i think the movie gets a bad rap it's decent. I don't think it's like the greatest movie ever or anything, but it was an enjoyable watch. But it does deviate from the novel. Um, it is closer than either one of the Universal monster movies from the 1930s. But uh, it's still, you know, not completely true to form. I think the closest version that I've seen is the Hallmark film from the early 2000s. It was made for television. And it stars Alec Newman as uh, Victor Frankenstein. And it's got a lot of people that were in the Sci-Fi Channel Dune adaptation in the film. Because Alec Newman played Paul Atreides in the Sci-Fi version of, um, of Dune. So he's playing Victor here. His father in that film, uh, Leto Atreides, right, was played by William Hurt. William Hurt is in the Hallmark version as his professor. And then even the dude that played uh, the Baron Harkonnen like popped up in the movie. It's like, what do we get? We got like all the people from Dune are now in this Hallmark Frankenstein version. So if you haven't seen the Frankenstein version, it's worth a watch. Um, Aiden Quinn plays the captain of the vessel trapped in the ice in this version. And Donald Sutherland plays the captain of the ship in the Hallmark version. So it's not bad. Uh, I just think that the creature makeup in the Hallmark version is pretty awful. He looks like the lead singer of Typo Negative. Doesn't really look like a monster. I think De Niro's costume or his makeup in this is pretty spectacular. Pretty fantastic. I got no complaints with the makeup department in the uh, Kenneth Branagh version here. It's just the movie just moves at such a breakneck pace. It just moves so fast. That uh, you just feel like you never really get a chance for the movie to breathe. So I guess that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. What do you think? Have you seen, have you read Frankenstein? Have you seen the uh, 94 version directed by Kenneth Branagh starring Robert Nero as a creature? What do you think of it? What's your favorite version of Frankenstein? Um, leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching and as always, have a wonderful day.